Welcome to The Funnel. My name is John Shane. I'm president of Alignment Group. This is episode number 205 of The Funnel, Sales Ride-Along Success. Before we get started, I just want to remind you, head on over to alignment-group.com backslash The Funnel. Subscribe, and every Thursday morning, we will send you the weekly update, and that includes the show notes. Agenda for today. What we see, objectives, pre-call planning, and feedback. So I want to start with what we see. And what I mean by that is what I see or what other folks that are doing what I'm doing see in our sales managers, either the ones that we've had working for us in the past or the ones that um, we coach now. So what we see with the sales ride along is that it's an intermittent process. In other words, they do it few and far between. Oftentimes, the field ride along is dropped for something else, whether that's internal meetings or paperwork or fire duties, putting out fires. Something gets in the way of it, and it doesn't happen. If your reps are spread out across a large geographical area, that may impact it. Maybe you have the eastern seaboard or the west coast or something like that, and you don't want to travel as much. There's a lot of different reasons for it. It's almost like sales call avoidance, and that's not good. When we do see ride-alongs, we don't see a process. We show up, we get in the car, and off we go. We chit-chat about life in general, business stuff, basic business stuff, family, kids, sports, whatever it is that you small talk about generally is what happens. So there's no real process to it. It's, hey, this day and time, at, I'm going to ride in the field with you. And you throw it in your calendar, they throw it in your calendar. Maybe you keep that time, maybe you don't. You don't, that's the intermittent part. You keep the time, you don't really have any plan or process for managing the day. It's just show up and we'll run some calls, we'll do some deals, and we'll talk about it. Oftentimes we see a sales manager that judges performance. So they sit back and, you know, they have this sort of the cross-eyed look and after the call, they're telling you everything you did wrong. So it's more of a performance evaluation, judging the performance. And that's not good. Next, we see managers tell the reps what to do. Tell me about this situation. What are we walking into? And they give it to you and the manager comes back and says, I want you to do this, 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 and this. I know managers, reps would come in and say, this is the situation I have. They take out a piece of paper. Okay, this is what you do. Here's the, here's the pricing. This is what the pricing is going to look like. Bang, 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 bang. This is what you say. This is what you do next. This is that, and off you go. That's not really managing. That's, it's trying to create them or recreate them or mold them into an image of you. What you would do and how you would do it. Oftentimes you're walking into a situation as a manager where you don't have as much context as the rep. So asking a few basic questions before you launch into telling them what to do is not healthy. You could be right. That makes it worse when it actually works because that reinforces the bad habit as if that's going to make the sales rep better, turn them into a better salesperson. And of course, I'm sure you heard the next one because this happens a lot. It happened to me. I did it. I know other managers that do it. They take over the call. Can't help themselves. They sit down. They say to the rep, I'm going to let you handle this. Two minutes in, they're monopolizing the conversation and asking the questions and taking it in the direction that they think it should go. And it happens over and over and over again. And when they have some level of success, they feel good about themselves. They feel good about what they've done. And they've said to themselves inside, hey, they watch the pro at work. They watch the master. Now they can go do that themselves. 
They justify why they're doing what they're doing. Right? They yearn for the days of selling themselves. They can walk in. And, and here's the best part about this. They can walk into one of your sales calls. Or a sales manager can walk into a call for your sales manager. You can walk into a call, take over a call, and there's really no consequences for your actions. Okay, let's say you screw it up or they just don't buy. And you have 15 reps or 10 reps or 5 reps on your team. That's one opportunity spread across multiple reps. There's no real damage done there. You get all the fun of being a sales rep without the responsibility or pressure of that rep in that moment at that time within their deal, their month, their quarter, their year. It's kind of cheating if you ask me. I know it feels good. I know it's fun. I know. I like it. Sometimes it's really hard to bite your tongue and not say anything. But that's the job. And you don't let them go down the rabbit hole and not get out. You don't let them burn the building down. But they have to manage the opportunities for, to get better. You have to find some synergy between the two of you. Or it's not going to work. So don't take over the call. You're not doing anybody any good. I know. Some companies, it's celebrated, right? I walk in with you. I got you. I went out in the field, and I, I killed it today with so-and-so. I got three orders for them. And their boss pats them on the back, and the owner shakes their hand and says, way to go. Well, you do that enough, and you're going to have a team full of sales reps that can't perform on their own. And in the long run, that's going to kill you. You're going to burn out. You don't have enough time to be in the field every day, all day, closing all of their orders. Or you're going to lose your job because your team's not performing enough. High turnover, etc. So think about that. Think about the intermittent way in which you handle field rides. The fact that you have no process. Maybe you judge their performance in a way that puts them on the defensive. You tell them what to do. You don't really help coach them or work with them. Or worse of all, you take over the call. So let's talk about objectives. This is sort of your first step for managing the ride-along. You want to create an outline of what that's going to look like, what the outcomes are going to look like, what you're trying to achieve, what your objectives are. You want to make sure they're measurable. So when you go out on the call... You have a plan. So you can have a ride-along plan, a standard operating procedure for a ride-along that has some nuances to it depending on the opportunity or the deal or the level of skill set your sales rep has, a senior rep versus a brand new rep. But it's, it's the framework's the same. You know exactly what you're going to do. You know exactly how you're going to measure it. You're there to reinforce whatever it is that the sales rep needs in terms of their skill set development. You're there to reinforce the process, the sales process, and in some ways reinforce what the sales rep has said to the customer or the prospect as you move forward to support their effort in the field. Your objective is to apply the process, not only the process for managing the ride-along, but the sales process. You want to know, are we applying the sales process? So think about it. You have this framework for a ride-along. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to ride along with each, each one of you twice a month. I don't know the number. I don't know how many people are on your team, but let's just say twice a month. And this is what's going to take place. Here are the objectives. Here's what we're trying to get out of our ride-along. My job is to help you get better at what you do. So we want this measurable. We're going to talk about the skill sets where you need help, and we're going to measure the results. And here's what we're going to do, and you lay it out. And you can lay it out in broad terms and be very specific with each team member as you begin to work with them in the field. I'm here to reinforce the sales skill sets that are necessary to be successful. This is the methodology we use. This is our sales process. I want to know that we're applying the sales process and the methodology to move from step to step in order to close the gap and drive revenue. I want to know that your sales skills are where they need to be and the areas you need work, we're going to talk about before the, the calls. And then after the call, we're going to do a post-call discussion about what happened, what worked, what didn't work. 
We'll document that. We'll communicate what's next for us. So you can lay out those sort of general objectives. Next, you want them to understand that before you go into a call, there's going to be some pre-call planning. So they need to be prepared for the field. You need to be prepared for the field. Maybe they can work with you on that. So let's talk about what that pre-call planning looks like. Might be a good idea to have a checklist, exactly what it is you're going to cover. Maybe they give you a heads up by giving you the five accounts you're going to visit the next day on your call. All the notes are in the CRM. Here's the objective of call A. This is really to move toward, this is the qualifying, this is the move to the next step. We're there to qualify. These are the options we have. The goal is maybe to get a demo, software demo, let's just say. So we have a checklist of things that we need to do. We know the objective of the call. We're going to discuss the options while we're in the car or meeting for coffee in the morning or breakfast, whatever it is you're doing. Discuss the options and what you're going to do. You go through the call and you grade it out. Now, I don't want you to sit in judgment of everything they did wrong. You want to grade out what worked, what didn't work, why it worked, why it didn't work. Maybe they did everything right and it didn't happen. But the idea of the pre-call plan is to get prepared before you walk in the door. How many times are you getting out of the car and walking in the parking lot towards the front door of the building? And you're discussing what you're going to do. That's not good. So think about what it's going to take in terms of time for the pre-call planning. What is it going to take for me to get up to speed? Do we, should we have a call the night before? Should we meet if, if I'm traveling to them? Should we meet at the hotel for breakfast? You meet me at 7 o'clock for breakfast. Our first appointment is at 8.30. And it takes about 20, 25 minutes to get there. So we're going to spend some time together going through the calls for the day. We'll go through each one. We'll lay out the objective for the call. We'll look at the checklist. We'll discuss the options. And whatever it is you're working on with them in, ter in terms of their development to help them become a better rep, you're going to discuss what, what you're going to be looking for and how you're going to grade that out. Not a judgy kind of way. It's like, look, one of the things we talked about is good questioning skills, good communication. And you've been working hard on that. So I'm going to be looking at that, and we'll, be, we'll talk about it when the meeting's over. And we'll discuss what that looks like. We'll grade it out. You talk about it, pre-call plan. You do the checklist. You're ready to go. Off you go into the call. So think about it. You've laid out with your team what your objectives are with ride-alongs, how often you're going to do it, what it's going to look like, the outcomes you're expecting, the communication and feedback. It's all the good stuff, right? You're, you're laying it out. Then you get into the day of the ride-along, and you want to plan. Maybe the night before you get on the phone and say, okay, these are the five calls we're doing. I don't care when you do the pre-call planning, but you should do it. Now you know exactly where you're going and what you're going to do that day. And there's always curveballs in sales opportunities. So how did they handle that curveball? Did they defer to you? It's okay. Jump in there. If they want you to jump in and have a conversation, you can't sit there like a, like a lump. But don't take over the call. Let them kind of work through the problem. If there is a problem, the key here to moving this forward to the next step in the ride along is feedback. People want feedback and they should get feedback. And they should get that feedback in writing. So you get, you're in the call. How did it go? Went great. Could I have done anything better? Well, maybe this, maybe that. I think your feedback should be verbally. You should have the conversation. You should take some notes, and at the end of the day, when you go back to your hotel room, you grab and dinner, and you're sitting down the next morning or that evening. I wouldn't go past the next morning on this. I would stay pretty clear on this. I'd put my notes together. John, we had a great day yesterday. These are the things that worked. I'm really excited about that. We discussed with your own development. These were the things. We were going to work on questioning skills, 
layering the questions, getting a deeper understanding of the customer's problem so we can move on to the next step and accomplish the goal. And that could be moving into the demo, could be the close, whatever you were working on. On this call, this is what we covered, this is what we did, this is what worked, this is what didn't. Here was the checklist, the next one, the next one, the next one. And then a little summary at the bottom that just says, hey, for our next ride along or our next discussion, let's focus on this. So you've laid it out ahead of time, how you're going to work with your team, right? Makes sense. You've, you've given them the ground rules. You put it all in, into perspective. The day of the ride along or the day before the ride along, you do some pre-call planning. You know exactly what the outcomes are, the objectives, what the lay of the land is with this specific client. You fought back against your bet in, against all the all the drive inside of you that you have to take over a call, and you've allowed them to go through the call. At the end of the call, get back in the car. Maybe you got the deal. You can high five one another. <laughs> you can work through all of that but you provide verbal feedback. Next, you put it in writing, maybe a summary for each call of the day. You use the checklist as a benchmark to help you. You should have tools that you use for this. Don't do everything from memory. Put it back in writing to them. And I should add here action items, things you're going to work on together, things that they're going to work on. And you provide them an opportunity to give you feedback. They can do that in writing. They can do it in person. So I do want to say that it's not a one-sided conversation. At the end of the day, when you put it in writing, you can give them space to come back to you and say, this is what I observed. You can certainly give them a tool to do that. They can verbally provide feedback with no repercussions. Hey, you know what? You interrupted me three times on that call. Cut me off mid-sentence. I know you think you're helping, but I don't like that. It's okay. The reason I didn't say this to the client or prospect was because I knew that, whatever whatever it is. So it should be a two-way street. Or I respond better if you give me an example. So can you walk me through what I did, positive, what I did, negative, whatever. And what you're doing is you're keeping an open two-way communication. And, and where that really helps you in the long run as a manager is when you get to a good spot with your rep and you're really cooking and you're doing these ride-alongs and you're in the field and you're providing feedback and you're going through the objectives, you get some real synergy working together. You know how to feed off of one another. I used to work with a, a guy, Ron. He taught me a lot. He taught me a lot about different things. Ron and then and then Bill. So Ron and I first couple calls were pretty ugly bumping into each other. Then eventually we found this spot. Like he was really good at going through certain qualifying stuff. And I was really good in sort of layering the questions that he would ask and getting deeper responses. There were other people that I would work with that we would tag team with. Maybe we, you know, we did demos. Bill would bring me in because he could lay out everything that was going on in a call ahead of time. We would lay that out in our pre-call planning with objectives and outcomes for demos. And I could just hit it every time and just let, just feed it right back to them and then give, give him through the demo, give him topics he can bring up and discuss with them while it was ongoing. We were moving on to the next thing. Synergy. That's what you're looking for. That kind of synergy. There's great value to that. Don't forget to head on over to alignment-group.com backslash the funnel and subscribe. We can be found on Facebook. Twitter handles at R. Of course, I'm on LinkedIn. You can email me at jshay at alignment-group.com. Head on over to the website. We have tons of stuff, especially on the topics I cover on the podcast and the blog. There's some downloadable things that you can get. There's some really good podcasts that maybe you missed. You can go back and check out check out the, the blog. Tons of stuff there. 
Thanks again for visiting us and subscribing. And until next time, keep filling the funnel.